My name is Dr Jeff Walters, I'm a Senior Lecturer in Management and Head of the Management Department. The research my Birkbeck colleague Dr Richard Takel and I have been involved in over the past eight years has concentrated on organisational governance and this is specifically within the non-profit sporting context. This focus has been led by the challenges and developments within the sports sector. What we've seen is how boards of sport organisations have been under the spotlight for a number of years. Many of these organisations have faced significant media and government scrutiny following allegations of doping, of bullying, of abuse and mismanagement. With the fundamental role of the board to oversee and govern the organisation to ensure that the organisation is accountable to key stakeholders and to set the culture of the organisation, it's understandable why there's been so much focus on the ways in which boards lead organisations and it's understandable why there are many questions asked about their role. One of the key research challenges when seeking to better understand board governance is actually getting insight into what's happening. What is it the boards do? How does the wider institutional context affect the work of boards? How do people within the board relate to each other? How do they work with each other? How are decisions made? And how are these decisions influencing the direction of the organisation? Essentially, we see board governance as a key organisational process and our research has sought to better understand these processes. However, getting access to boards is not easy and it underpins why much of the existing literature in this field relies on quantitative approaches, for example through surveys of board directors. This does not necessarily lend itself to providing insight into what is actually happening within the boardroom. It doesn't open up the black box of the boardroom. We've been very fortunate to have been able to spend time inside the boardroom observing meetings, interviewing directors, reading through board material that's allowed us to gain a better understanding of board processes. Our research has looked at various aspects of the board including how macro level processes of modernisation in the non-profit sports sector from the 1990s onwards have shaped how board members perceive and enact their roles what we found is that many board members now emphasise their financial and strategic roles while de-emphasising their traditional representative boundary spanning roles, raising important questions about accountability. We've also examined this issue of accountability in more detail. We've shown how board members across the non-profit sports sector are compelled to enact upward accountability to funders but struggle to balance this with downward accountability accountability to members. They typically construct other forms of accountability in board discussions, for example accountability to their community and to their mission, but they tend not to embed these in ongoing board practices. Related to this, we've examined the wider process of codification in the non-profit sports sector, the emergence and institutionalisation of codes of governance, and the way that this has influenced governance practices. Our research has supported the development of the Voluntary Code of Good Governance published by the Sport and Recreation Alliance. We've also been involved in co-authoring sector-wide reports. For example, in 2018 we wrote the State of Sports Governance report that we worked on in partnership with Moore Stevens. We've also run seminars and workshops that have influenced policy and raised the level of public debate. Through our in-depth case study research at a board of a non-profit governing body of sport, we've also contributed directly to improving organisational practice. Mm -hmm.